Hello everyone. Welcome back to your GMAT preparation with Infinity Education. Today in our fourth class, we will learn about data sufficiency. First, you have to understand what is sufficiency. Sufficient means whether getting a sufficient answer or not. Like for a particular question, if you get one particular answer, then we can say that is sufficient. But if you are getting more than one answer, we can say this is insufficient. Just to give you some basic idea, I have taken an example. If x square is 25, so there is two value for x for which the equation can satisfy 5 and minus 5. So I can say this is insufficient because I'm not getting one particular value. But if I'm getting x plus 3 equals to 10, so the value for x should be 7. Here we can say this is sufficient because there is no other value of x apart from 7 for which the equation can satisfy. So basically in data sufficiency question, we are looking for a definite answer. I hope the sufficient and insufficient is a bit clear to you. Now let's see in some of the examples. So data sufficiency, the answers are always same. A should be the answer when we can see statement one alone is sufficient, but statement two alone is not sufficient to answer the question. B should be the answer when statement two is alone sufficient, but one alone is not sufficient to answer the question. C should be the answer when both statement one and two together are sufficient to answer the question, but neither statement alone is sufficient. D should be the answer when each statement alone is sufficient to answer the question. And E should be the answer when together one and two also, they are not sufficient. Now let's see, A should be the answer when one is sufficient and two is insufficient. That's why I've taken the sufficient one in the circle green and the insufficient, I have crossed it with red. B should be the answer when one is insufficient, two is sufficient. C should be the answer when one, two together insufficient, Sorry, together sufficient, but individually they're insufficient. D should be the answer when they're individually sufficient. E should be the answer when they're individually insufficient, together also they are insufficient. I hope this one is clear to you. The question is asking, what is the value of x? Now, if you see the statement, that is x plus two equals to five. Now, if you just calculate the value for x, that will be three. So we can say this is sufficient because except three, there are no other values of X for which the equation will satisfy. And statement two is X is an integer. So the value for X can be three, four, five, anything. So we can say this is insufficient. So I can say A is the answer because A should be the answer when statement one alone is sufficient, but statement two alone is not sufficient or insufficient. So that's why I have circled the one and I have crossed out the two. Next question, again the same question, what is the value for x? Statement one is saying x is an integer. So x again can be anything, two, three, four. So we can say this is insufficient. And statement two is x plus two equals to five. So the value for x should be three. Because as we have known, that except three, there should be no other value for X for which the equation is sufficient. So we can say B is the answer. Why? B should be the answer when statement one alone is insufficient, but statement two alone is sufficient. Next question, what is the value for X? Now, statement one is saying X square equals to nine. That means there should be two value for X for which the equation will satisfy. That is plus three and minus three. So it should be insufficient because we are not getting any definite answer. Statement two is saying X is more than equals to zero. That means X can be any value which is positive like two, three, four. So again, it is insufficient. So the moment both of them are individually insufficient, we will combine them. And if we combine them, we can see there is only one value for x, which is three, for which both the statement is working 
are sufficient. So C should be the answer when one and two is individually insufficient, but together they are sufficient. Now, the next one, again, the what is the value for X? So X plus two is five. So X equals to three, sufficient. X equals to under root nine. That means the value for X have to be only three. Now, some people might get confused that the value for X have to be plus minus three, but that is not true. As we can see, the power of X is one. So there should be only one value that is positive for which the equation will satisfy. So D will be the answer because statement one and two individually they are sufficient. Next one, again, what is the value for X? Statement one, X is an integer. So it is insufficient because two, three, four, any integer can possible. Statement two, X is greater than equals to zero. So it can be two, three, four again. So it is also insufficient. Now when one and two is individually insufficient, I will combine them. So by combining also, we are getting for x as 2, 3, 4 is possible because x is an integer and more than equals to 0. So combining also, we are not getting any definite value. So it is insufficient. So here we can say e is the answer because they are not only individually insufficient, but also together also they are insufficient. Now let's see the next one. What is basic ADBC approach? Now let's see, because for every question, we need not to check the individually, but we will follow some technique. Now we will learn that one only. So now if you see the statement two is darkened, now you are thinking this question is wrong, right? But that is not true. So if X plus two equals to five in the statement one, so we are getting the value for X equals to three, so that is sufficient. So A can be the answer. Yes, hold on. B can be the answer. No. C can be the answer. No. Because C should be the answer when individually insufficient, then I should go for the combine or margin. But here, one is alone sufficient. D can be the answer. Yes, this can be the answer. Can be the answer. I'm not saying this is the answer. E can be the answer. No. So the moment I'm getting statement one is sufficient, I will write AD. Then I will check the statement two. Now let's see one algorithm here. So first we will do read the full question or we will try to figure out what the question is asking. Then evaluate the statement one. After evaluating, if we see it is sufficient, it should be AD as we have seen already. After getting AD, we will evaluate the statement two. If statement two is sufficient, we should write D is the answer. Why? D is the answer when statement one and statement two is individually sufficient. But if evaluating the statement two, if we are getting insufficient, we must say A is the answer. Why? A is the answer when statement one alone is sufficient, but two alone is not sufficient. So the left wing is clear to you. Now, what will happen after evaluating the statement one, if we see that is insufficient, we can write BCE. After getting BCE, we will evaluate the statement two. After evaluating the statement two, if we see the statement two is sufficient, we will write B. Why? B should be the answer when statement one is alone insufficient, but statement two alone is sufficient. Now, after evaluating statement two, if it is insufficient, we must write CE. After getting CE, we will evaluate the statement one and two together because we know when the statement one and two individually they are insufficient, we have to combine or merge them just to check whether together they're sufficient or not. After evaluating the statement one and two together, if we see that is sufficient, we will write C because C is the answer when individual is sufficient,
but together they are sufficient and if those are insufficient together also we will go for option number e i hope this entire thing is clear to you just for your understanding i'm repeating the things evaluate the statement one first if it is sufficient go for ad then evaluate the statement two if it is sufficient go for d because d is the answer when statement one and two individually sufficient after evaluating the statement two if i'm getting insufficient i should go for a because a should be the answer when one is sufficient and two is insufficient after evaluating statement one if i'm getting insufficient i will write bce after getting bce we will evaluate the statement two if the statement two is sufficient we will write b if it is insufficient we will write e after getting ce we will evaluate statement one and two together if together they are sufficient we will write c if they are insufficient we will write e i hope the thing is clear to you so that is all about our data sufficiency technique and all now if you have any doubt regarding the techniques and all you can always get back to me in the comment section thank you everyone happy learning